Hello everyone, thank you for joining the part two of our webcast series on basics in feline reproduction. So terrible here, it's snowing, we are April, April 22nd and the weather is just terrible. So, uh, but it's a great pleasure to join this webcast and to discuss what we can do, what you guys need to know when it comes to breeding cats. And because as I said in the previous webcast, uh, those social media platforms offers us an, an incredible opportunity to educate new breeders. So uh, that's simply fantastic, and that is something I'm a big believe. I, I really believe in. So, without further ado, let's uh, jump to our slides because, as usual, I prepared some slides for you guys. Up, and here they are. So. Last time we focused on what uh, people need to know before breeding those individuals and today uh, we'll go uh, a step forward and we'll really focus on the breeding process. What happens when, what you need to know when it comes to breeding uh, to, 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 to put a male and a female together and what you can expect. The first thing we need to focus on is uh, the fact that queens are induced ovulators. When you breed cats, uh, you know that uh, they, they get into season on a regular basis, but if they are not bred, they are typically do not ovulate. And if they don't ovulate, they will not be pregnant. Ovulation means uh, release of the oocytes, the eggs, inside the genital tract, and then they will be fertilized by the, by the spermatozoa that are around. But they are induced ovulators, and ovulation is induced by mating. So let's take a look at the hormonal mechanism behind ovulation in queens. So one of the triggering factors is a hormone called LH. LH stands for luteinizing hormone, and it's an hormone which is produced in the brain of the animals. And this secretion of LH is in fact triggered by breeding, by the matings. So typically, in cats, uh, you see this line that just appeared. This is the amount of LH you need, the queen needs to produce to induce ovulation. So when you have only one breeding, typically following one breeding, there is an increase of secretion of LH because in fact there are some receptors in the vagina of the queen that will transmit the information to the brain and that will lead to secretion of LH. But you see that one breeding is usually not enough to reach the threshold for ovulation. So we know today that we need to observe at least three breedings to reach this threshold and then to induce ovulation. It's important to keep in mind that only 50% of the queens will ovulate after a single breeding. So you need to observe at least three breeding attempts to be quite sure that ovulation is about to occur. And typically, after those three breeding attempts, ovulation will occur 24 to 30 hours after, and the oocyte will be released, and in cats, uh, if uh, the spermatozoa that are around can directly directly fertilize those oocytes. So this is important to keep in mind. The, there is a cent certain number of breeding attempts that are required to induce ovulation. One breeding will only induce ovulation in 50% of the females. And the second thing to keep in mind is uh, to have in mind when it comes to breeding cats is a succession of events. What's going to happen? What are the different phases when it comes to breeding? Typically, it starts with a phase of courtship where the male and the female are looking at each other, uh, sniffing each other, etc. Uh, it can take some minutes, some hours, uh, sometimes just a few seconds. It really depends on the experience of the breeding partners. But uh, it always starts like this. And then the male typically will mount the female. And look what he's doing here. This is uh, he's biting the female at the neck level, which will immobilize the female. Uh, it's a reflex when uh, this will happen, the, when, when the male will bite the female, she will stop moving, so he will be able, able to penetrate the female and then to ejaculate. If the male has gingivitis or oral issues, etc., uh, he won't be able 
to do this. And if he's not able to do that, that could be a reason, uh, that could be a cause of infertility, just because he's not able to properly immobilize the female. When the female is not moving anymore, uh, the male will penetrate the female and coitus usually lasts 10 to 15 seconds in, in, in the feline species. Uh, and after 15, 10, 15 seconds, the male, the male will ejaculate in the vagina of the queen. The volume of ejaculate is very low. Typically, it's around 100 microliters, so very, very tiny compared to other species. But it contains enough spermatozoa to ensure uh, fertility. To ensure pre to, to to fertilize the eggs, and there's something important after that that you guys need to observe. It's called the postcoital reaction. So typically, after mating, the female will have an aggressive reaction towards the male. So basically, she slap him in the face, and you need to see that. You need to see this aggressive reaction because it tells you that penetration did occur and that the male apparently the male ejaculated in the female so the first thing to see is this aggressive reaction uh, of the female towards the male and then well you see typically uh, here here is the aggressive reaction and the male here is an it is an experienced male because he know what's going to happen so he's just flying away after the breeding but then the female will start rolling. Uh, she might start licking uh, her genital area as well. Typically, during the penetration, you will hear a very, very weird and loud uh, meow that uh, is also indicative of penetration. So you see that all these different things are part of what we call the postcoital reaction. And these are things you need to observe when it comes to mating in the feline species because this tells you that mating did occur and that uh, the male apparently ejaculated in the female. Why is that important? Why is it important to observe? Because uh, it's important to keep in mind that absence and lack of breedings are the number one cause of infertility in the feline species. So you know your animals, you know how they would react. Some of them are shy and won't, don't want you around when it comes to, uh, to breeding. Some of them want you to be around. Um, whatever happens, you need to observe what's going on because that's one of the most common causes of infertility and that's something you need to uh, detect because if the queen is infertile because she was not bred or she wasn't bred at all. Uh, it's important. It's an important information to bring to your veterinarian because if you just come and say, "Oh, she was infertile," we can launch thousands of dollars of compli of complementary testings to try to find out what's wrong. But maybe it's just because she wasn't bred properly, and that's something you guys can observe inside your catteries. So again, find a way to observe what's going on uh, during the mating. From an hormonal standpoint, what's going to happen after the breeding? So if the male, uh, if the female was bred enough and that ovulation occurred, typically this is what's going to happen. So after ovulation, she will secrete progesterone. Uh, in fact, the ovarian follicles, the structures on the ovaries that contain the eggs, uh, will, tur will, trans will turn into something we call the corpora lutea. And those corpora lutea, they produce progesterone. So if the female is not pregnant, if she ovulated, but she, for any reason, uh, poor sperm quality or anything else, she doesn't get pregnant. Uh, if she ovulated, she will secrete this second hormone, progesterone. And she will secrete progesterone from for roughly 4, 45 days. And then uh, the, the pro pro progesterone secretion will cease. And after this, two, three weeks after that, a new estrus period will follow. So basically, based on the inter interestrus interval, based on the uh, interval between the different uh, estrus period, you can detect if you can evaluate if the, the queen ovulated or not. So, and that's something uh, important for you guys to check because this is a question your veterinarian might ask you in case of infertility. How long did it take for the queen to come back into season after the breeding? If it's a normal interestrus interval plus 45 days roughly, she might have ovulated 
but she didn't conceive. If it's just a, no a normal interstitial interval, it can tell you that it, it might tell you that she didn't ovulate at all. And remember, this interstitial interval de really depends on the breed, and it can vary a lot whether you breed Persians or Siamese and Orientals, etc. The second thing that can happen, and this is what you aim for, in fact, is basically that she ovulates and then she will secrete, she's pregnant and she will secrete progesterone. And when she's pregnant, she will secrete progesterone for a longer period, typically 65 days. So this typically ends with parturition and with the, the whelping of, kid, of the kittens. So as you can see, the hormonal profiles are quite different, uh, whether they ovulate or not. So these are very basic things to keep in mind when it comes to breeding your queen. And again, um, oh, I'm gonna move from these slides and come back here. So here am I again. So I think these are important elements to have in mind before breeding your animals. Uh, and when you're breeding them, Remember, there are a few things, especially you need to keep in mind, you need to observe what's going on because this is really key. This will give, give, you, access, give you access to those technical elements that are essential uh, to ensure fertility of your animals. So that's what I wanted to tell you today. So I hope you learned a few things and I hope you are going to find a way to observe what's going on during the breeding process. Again, if you have any questions related to that, don't hesitate to communicate with me on social medias, etc. Uh, it's a small community. The more we work together, the more we can help this world move forward. And the good thing is that there's still lots of things to learn in uh, feline reproduction. So the next webcast will focus on gestation. How do we diagnose it? What do we need to know about it? Uh, but that's for another time. Thank you and uh, see you then. Bye-bye.